Okay, so we are rushing this a little bit, but in order to finish off our spot illustration, we need to make sure that it works well on all three backgrounds. A solid gray background, a solid black background, and a solid white background. And we can do that by, by introducing kind of an offset. So notice that the white fill color overlay I used for my bird, you can see it here on the effects. That works really well on the, <laughs> on the black background. And just to remind you, I can right click it and rasterize that layer style. Because I did it as a duplicate, I still have my vector here. By rasterizing that layer style, I can erase away from it and still have a black eye if I want. Right? Which I think will be pretty effective. So I do that by rasterizing the layer style, and then that allows me to just delete out right, for certain parts. And then I can also delete out from the, or not delete out, but go to that color spectrum layer and show the white in there. In fact, I can even just fill it with white. So by having the layers set up, in a way that you can always color behind your line work, you'll always be able to customize it, right? So I might want to do that for the beak as well. Not there. What am I doing? Here we go. So I'm going to take my rasterized layer, which is right here. That's giving me the white. And I'm going to make just the inside of the beak here. Maybe just the bottom of it get back to the black. It's all about kind of careful selections. Like so. So all these little things that you can do to tweak it. Okay. Um, I like the addition. Whenever you do kind of a flat fill and you have a lot of open space, I like the dissolve filter I have on this for one of my soft edge duotone layers. So I'm going to add that to one of the, the bunnies duotone layers. See, I think I might do it to this. I'm just going to change its layer mode to dissolve and then take it down a few percentages. I've still got the, I want the cut edge. There we go. Top of that. And then I might do that to the, the duotone cut edge as well, dissolve a little, take it down. There we go. And maybe even give it a little bit of a gradient overlay. Since I'm using full spectrum now, anything goes. But I can take that opacity on the gradient down quite a bit. And maybe even dissolve that. Maybe choose a different gradient. So many options. Yeah, that one kind of works. All right, and then I might want to do that to my color holds as well. These white things are a little strong, so I'm going to set them to dissolve. And now it's kind of like dandruff on the, the back of the, of the bunny. And if I think that's too strong, I can actually uh, duplicate it 
Command J, select them both and merge them together. And that's another way to rasterize a layer style. And I can fill that with a gradient at a low opacity. So this time it's going to be a brighter gradient. Something like that. And because it's all on its own layer, at any time, I can double it up, increase it, merge it all together, erase from it. So you have full control. So I'm going to double it up and then erase from it up here. And then erase from it a little bit more. But I like it along the back and along the ear. And on the paws. So there's a lot more kind of particular work I can do to get this where I want it to be. But for now, it's pretty good. Add a little dissolve to my full spectrum layer. By darkening it and then duplicating it and then merging them together and then dissolving it. And then we are going to make sure they look good on the different backgrounds. So just being recognizable is not the same as looking good. Looking good is looking good. So what do we want? We want to make sure it's fully readable. And for it to be fully readable, I think I'm there now. Take this opacity down. To make it fully readable, I don't want my black line to just kind of disappear on the black background, and it feels like it does. So we have to add what's called an offset, because that purple is awfully dark to go on a black background. So an offset is like the opposite of a drop shadow, right? You use a drop shadow when it's on white to help it stand out. So let's start there. Let's start with a white background. How does my spot illustration look on a white background? It looks okay but I lose the definition on the edge of my bird because it has a white color, color hold, right? So what can I do? Well, I can go to my vector layer. Always good to do these based on the vector. So I'm gonna unlock it and I'm just gonna add a drop shadow because on white, this gives you an offset. And I can make that a color drop shadow. I can make it a gradient drop shadow, whatever. I just want it to be pretty simple. I want it to be a little bit darker so it helps show up on white, just like you do with a, a black and white logo. And that's going to help it show up. And if I need to, I can even uh, duplicate that drop shadow with what's called an outer glow. So if I need it on the top as well, see I just introduced an hour glow, and you know what, it's kind of nice having that red. That was just the last thing I used. So that is called an offset. And that way my bird, my fully colored bird, <laughs> with all of its line work, now will, will show up on white with a little more definition. And you know what, it helps it show up on the gray as well, to have that slight red and that slight shadow containing it. Okay, so now let's deal with an offset for the rabbit. Because the rabbit looks great on white, but on black, the line work gets kind of lost. So if I go up to the, the bunnies vector, unlock it, we are adding offsets here. Again, it's optional. I can add a drop shadow, but instead of it being black, I can make it white. And instead of being, um, 
multiply mode, it could be normal mode. And that helps the line work show up. There it is. As an offset. And that might be all I need. But if I decide I also need to have that, that gradient on the top, I can do that. Just like I did with the bird, I can put um, an outer glow. There it is. And have that same kind of slight red. So you see those three different bands. And that's going to help it show up, this spot illustration be as versatile as possible on these different backgrounds. So whether it's gray, whether it's white, or whether it's black. Now, the one thing that's keeping me from making a t-shirt of this right now is that that line is so harsh. So I'm just going to do something really simple. I'm just going to do some internal compositing. As long as you understand where things come from, you can experiment on your own as you like. I'm going to take that, that crazy full spectrum color I used for the bird. I'm going to take a chunk of it, duplicate it, move it up through the layers, move it physically to where the, the bottom of the, the rabbit is, sink it down through the layers a little bit. Nope, it needs to go up. And now I am going to erase away from it with 100% opacity, soft edge eraser, right? And just like we've done in previous compositing assignments, I'll kind of sink it in. Maybe I will Invert it. Nope. Well, yeah, maybe. And then dissolve it a little bit. And then maybe erase away a little bit more from it at a lower opacity. So I'm using a lot of dissolve for this illustration. You're going to see how that works when I save it as a PNG. Okay, and then I just asked, do I like that better than that? And yes, yes, I do. Okay, <coughs> so the problem with dissolve is you can't actually see what it looks like exactly unless you're viewing it at 100%. And this is large resolution. So 100% is going to be quite big on the screen. So this is 100%, and that's actually how the dissolve looks. So it's pretty subtle. And it will print really well. Okay, now, good time to save. This is how you have to save it to finish your spot illustration. You have to turn off your backgrounds and save as a PNG. And if PNG is not an option, you have to check that your mode is RGB, not CMYK. Turn off all backgrounds, so it's just floating on that empty grid. And once my computer gives me control again, <laughs> I will be able to do it. Now my file, with the vectors, with all the different coloring options, is now one gigabyte large. So that's not tiny. And it looks good on, on gray. It looks good on black with the offsets. And it looks good on white. So I know it's as versatile as it can be. So I'm going to turn all of those off just so I see the checkerboard. And then I say file, save as. I've already saved it as a Photoshop file for myself. I'm going to save it as a PNG, an online file type that supports transparency. Like we saved our cartoon jumbles so long ago.